Hey everybody, welcome back to my coverage of the Pog Champs 3 tournament. This is the Mr. Beast vs. Code Miko match. Game 2, if you missed game 1, you can check it up in the info box. Come back and watch this video. Mr. Beast is leading 1-0 and he has the white pieces. So will we go to an Armageddon or will Mr. Beast shut out Code Miko and get the win in only two games? Let's just see. Uh, Mr. Beast is the rating favorite and he does have the white pieces this game. We have D4 and now D5 from Code Miko. Uh, and here, Mr. Beast already kind of makes a mistake. He plays knight c3. And when you play queen's pawn games, you really... Uh, one, one of the things to keep in mind is white is you want to play c4 before you develop your knight. Um, just because th this is really the only way uh, chess masters have found that really try really contests the center well uh, in queen's pawn openings. Um, you can't do... You can't simply develop your knight to c3... Um, just developing normally like you could in a king's pawn game uh, you have to play this c4 move first so this knight to c3 already a small inaccuracy from mr beast um once again you just push the c4 pawn first and here very surprising move from code miko e5 and this i mean i've never seen this opening before um <laughs> this just seems crazy uh, uh this is just a free pawn and mr beast should definitely take it which he does, and um, yeah, I mean, if you're going to go into something like this, you should really uh, know what you're doing and have prepped this line as Code Miko, which I don't think Code Miko has done. So uh, yeah, this, this is basically just a hanging pawn as far the, as the players are concerned. Uh, we have now Bishop B4 from Code Miko and A3 from Mr. Beast. Now D4 from Code Miko. So maybe her idea was she wanted to develop this bishop and then attack this knight. However, this is not actually good for Code Miko because Mr. Beast can simply take this bishop and after uh, D takes C3, first trade queens and then take this pawn and white will be up two pawns and black will not be able to castle. So this will definitely be very good for white. And we actually do have this uh, sequence of moves on board. We have this A takes B4 uh, and Code Miko goes for the knight. We have a queen trade and now B takes C3. Uh, so white is definitely doing very well. Mr. Beast is uh, doing very well. A great start to the game for him. We have bishop f5 and now bishop b2, just looking to uh, develop that bishop, though it probably would have been better on uh, this diagonal or, I mean, right now it's sort of hard to determine where to put this bishop, uh, so maybe a move like knight to f3 or g3 would have been, um, would have been better. Uh, but we have bishop b2 and um, yeah, I mean, giving up the c pawn from Mr. Beast is also a fine decision. Uh, just because, um, you know, it's not really important. You have another C pawn, and also um, you, you don't really want to waste time defending it. And if if Code Miko goes ahead and grabs it, uh, she will be a little bit behind in development. Um, so it's totally okay to not defend the C pawn here as Mr. Beast. Code Miko does grab the C pawn, which is totally okay as well. Uh, you know, she is by, behind in material, so she wants to try to catch up. And now we have C4 from Mr. Beast. Uh, just opening up this bishop a little more though this though this e5 pawn is still in the way we have knight c6 from code miko and um yeah th this is actually one of the reasons why i didn't like this uh, c4 move i forgot to mention but this c4 move um i mean you kind of have to play it eventually because now your bishop is on b2 uh, which is one of the reasons why bishop b2 wasn't the greatest move in the first place because now you have to play c4 that weakens b4 and it's just going to take you longer to develop anyway you know when you play the c4 move you're not developing your other pieces um and also you make this b4 pawn weak which code miko can immediately attack with knight to c3 so now you have to spend another move moving this bishop with a move like bishop c3 um however yeah it, it so yeah uh will C mr beast go for bishop to c3 or for something else uh, he actually goes for knight f3, and this is definitely a mistake because now this just totally hangs the b pawn. Um, and you're you're slowly but surely letting black get back into this game. So we do have knight takes b4 from Miko, which is definitely good. And Mr. Beast, uh, here definitely g3 uh, would have been a playable move, just looking to develop this last bishop. But we have knight d4 instead, which I guess is okay. Uh, we have now c5 from Code Miko. And um, now Mr. Beast has to move this knight again. So you don't want to take this bishop because you'll get forked on the king and the rook. Uh, so maybe we'll have knight b5 or uh, maybe we'll have knight back to f3. 
uh, we actually see Mr. Beast now take this knight, or excuse me, take this bishop on c2 with his knight. And this is definitely a mistake because now, uh, it, I mean, as long as Code Miko sees, she can recapture this knight. She doesn't even need to see the fork, uh, which Code Miko does. She plays knight takes c2, and now black will actually be up in exchange, and black will be doing very well. Uh, so we have knight takes c2, king d1, and now knight takes a1, bishop takes a1, and Code Miko gets her last minor piece into the game with knight to e7. Uh, we have e6, so a pawn sacrifice by Mr. Beast, but he is unleashing this bishop on g7. Uh, so a fine move from him, in my opinion. Code Miko does capture this pawn with f takes e6. Uh, f6 was also a playable move, but f takes e6 is also totally fine. We have bishop takes g7, and now rook g8 uh, attacking that bishop and saving the rook. We have bishop f6 now pinning this knight. I think a very good move here from uh, Mr. Beast. And now we have b5 from Code Miko, just looking to create a passed pawn on the queen side. Uh, and here is Mr. Beast. Uh, th this b5 move actually wasn't the most accurate uh, from Code Miko. Probably better was uh, a5 or just uh, king d7 getting out of this pin. Uh, but uh, we, we do have b5 from Code Miko. And Mr. Beast here should definitely take this pawn. You do give black a passed pawn, uh, but uh, you, you are, you know, if you don't take this pawn, black will get a connected passed pawn by, pl by pushing b4. So um, having a isolated passed pawn is going to be better for white than black having a connected passed pawn. But we do see e4 from Mr. Beast. So I think his idea here was he was just trying to control the center, I guess, uh, and also defending his pawn with c uh, with this bishop. However, you now allow black to get a connected pass pawn with b4. So will Miko go for this b4 move? Uh, we actually have rook to f8, so first attacking this bishop, and now e5 from Mr. Beast, which is the best move. Uh, just advancing this pawn, you know, you want to advance your pawns in the endgame, and also defending this bishop. Now we have b takes c4 from Code Miko, and once again, this b4 move would have been a little bit stronger, but b takes c4 is uh, still winning. Uh, Mr. Beast does recapture this with bishop, bishop takes c4, and now this bishop is developed and hitting this e6 pawn. Uh, so black has to defend this with a move like king d7. However, we have rook b8 from Code Miko, and um, this is actually a really sneaky move because now if Mr. Beast takes this pawn, uh, he will get skewered with rook b1 and the rook on h1 will be lost. So will Mr. Beast fall for this trick? He does not. He plays rook to e1. Uh, however, this still allows Code Miko to trade rooks with rook b1, uh, which will be beneficial to her as she is up in material. Uh, so will Code Miko go for this? Better for Mr. Beast would have been uh, king c2, just activating that king in the endgame, uh, getting your king closer to black's past pawns over here, and, and also not allowing this trade and opening up the first rank for your rook. But we have rook e1 and rook b1 check from Miko. Miko going for that trade as it is beneficial to her. We have king d2 and now not rook takes e1 uh, check. Code Miko seemed to be aversive to this rook trade. I'm not sure if she wanted to hang on to both rooks or, or what it was, but um, you definitely should trade here as you are up in material. Um, and also you kind of have to trade here because uh, I mean, otherwise you have to make a move like rook b6 to defend your e-pawn. You're making a passive move with your rook. You're letting, you're allowing white to, uh, you're giving a white a chance to make their rook active. So here you really just have to trade as black. But we see rook b4 from Code Miko, and now this gives Mr. Beast the opportunity to take this e6 pawn. So will he do it? His bishop is attacked, so uh, it is likely he will see it in my opinion. He does, and he plays bishop takes e6, and now we have rook d4 check. And um, although white is still down in exchange, they now have these two connected pass pawns, and uh, they are even up a pawn. So uh, this is now a game again. White is back in the game, and this game could go either way at this point. But we have rook d4 check from Code Miko and king e2 from Mr. Beast. Once again, allowing this trade. Um, it, it's unclear whether Code Miko should go for this trade, uh, but I, it just from like a principle standpoint, it's hard to determine immediately whether she should go for this trade, but I do think that, um, this trade is still beneficial for Code Miko. But I mean, when you play King E2, you are just giving black this option. So, uh, you, you really just don't want to give black this option at all, especially if you're not sure if this is a good trade or not. Uh, so I think King C3 would have been a lot better here uh, for Code Miko. 
but we have king e2 and now rook e4 check from code miko so having another chance at trading rooks here we have king f1 uh, and now code miko not trading rooks but playing rook d4 instead um, i do think trading rooks uh, would have been a good idea here for code miko um, but we have rook d4 instead um, and yeah uh, <laughs> the game continues uh, we have f4 and this is a, not a very good move by mr beast because it simply hangs upon and then you don't even have these connected pass pawns anymore you'll simply have this isolated pass pawn um, which will definitely not be as strong will code miko see it though we uh she does and she does play rook takes f4 this is also check the king moves to e2 and uh, now that you've neutralized white's main threat you should definitely go for this rook trade i can now say that with confidence so we do have rook e4 check from code miko and after king d2 once again code miko not wanting to go for this rook trade like i said she did seem a bit aversive to this rook trade i'm not sure exactly what what was causing that aversion uh, but we have rook d4 check instead and after king e2 uh, mr beast is totally fine with a repetition of moves uh, which would be a draw for him and he would win the match so he's totally fine with that However, we have Rook G8 from Code Miko. Code Miko not interested in a draw. She's interested in a loss because this actually hangs the Rook. So uh, will Mr. Beast see this hanging Rook? Uh, the, wor the worst part is too, you can't even take the Bishop for the Rook because the Knight is pinned to the King. So uh, White would just be totally winning here. Uh, however, Mr. Beast does not see this move. He sees that his G pawn is attacked instead and goes ahead and defends it with King to F1. Um, now Code Miko has a chance to save her rook with a move like rook to g6. So will she save her rook? No, she doesn't. She plays king c7. Not only are you not saving your rook here, but you also hang your knight. And here it's actually better to take the knight than the rook because um, if you, excuse me, if you take the knight, you're just winning a piece outright. If you take the rook, you're only winning an exchange because now the knight can capture back. Uh, so it's actually better to take the knight here as Mr. Beast. Will he take the knight or the rook or do something else? Well, Mr. Beast does take the knight with bishop takes e7, and uh, now Mr. Beast is totally winning. So we'll see if he converts this or if he blunders back to code Miko. We have rook g7, uh, and uh, I think rook e8 w would have been uh, a good chance at drawing. This is a skewer on the bishops, so after a move like rook d6 check, saving this first bishop uh, with check, uh, we could see something like rook takes d6, sacrificing the rook for this bishop pair uh, and the passed pawn. And um, I think black has very good chances of drawing this. If they can uh, trade rooks and win this g pawn, white will have the wrong colored bishop and it will be a draw. So I think this would have been Code Miko's best chance at drawing uh, after this point. But um, I mean, th this skewer is hard to see, first of all. And and I mean, even after uh, bishop d6 check, it's hard to sacrifice this bishop unless... Uh, you really know what you're doing in this uh, sacrifice this rook for this bishop unless you really know what you're doing in this end game uh, but we have rook g7 instead so uh, code miko does save her rook now mr beast did not capture or did not get a chance to capture that rook uh, we have bishop f6 now mr beast saving his bishop and rook to g6 we have bishop b3 by mr beast and rook to b4 now attacking that bishop uh, i think rook d2 would have been a much stronger move just going after these second rank pawns and also cutting off the king um, but we have rook b4 and now we have bishop c2 from mr beast rook b2 once again uh going after these second rank pawns uh, however with this bishop c2 move code miko did miss that her rook was attacked uh, on g6 so here you have to move your rook you have to play like uh, rook h6 going after this h2 pawn potentially um really just saving your rook is the top priority <laughs> just move it to any safe square but mr beast or code miko does not see this she plays rook b2 and uh will mr beast capture this rook yes he does i think that was his main reasoning behind playing this bishop to c2 in the first place was attacking the rook because he plays this fairly quickly and now we have a5 from code miko so not even recapturing this bishop um, not exactly sure what she was thinking there. Uh, Mr. Beast also now, uh, r really the cleanest win here is just to push this pawn. Also, that would be a discovered attack on the rook on b2. So um, definitely a tricky move. Will Mr. Beast play it? Uh, no, instead he goes for bishop takes h7, which is fine too. You know, you're just saving your bishop and 
taking that pawn. So fine move two. We have a4 from Code Miko, and Mr. Beast just needs to make sure uh, Code Miko doesn't get sneaky and somehow promotes this pawn. Uh, we have e6 from Mr. Beast, and now rook b6 from Code Miko. Uh, now, if uh, Mr. Beast advances this pawn, he drops the bishop, but it wouldn't matter too much anyway. Mr. Beast would still be able to promote. We have g3 from now, g3 now from Mr. Beast. Uh, maybe he was a little wary of moving this pawn since he saw this bishop, uh, but this move doesn't do too much. And now a3 from Code Miko. g4 from Mr. Beast, kind of weird considering he just played g3, but uh, we have g4 and now a2 from uh, Code Miko. g5 from Mr. Beast now defending this bishop. And so now Mr. Beast uh, can safely push this pawn without losing any material. We have a1 equals queen and rook takes a1. Bishop takes a1 definitely would have been better because then you don't drop this e-pawn. But we have rook takes a1, which is, you know, totally fine too. Uh, even if black picks up this e-pawn, white will still totally be winning. Uh, but Code Miko doesn't even pick up this pawn. Uh, she plays rook to b2 instead. We have rook back to e1, Mr. Beast getting his rook behind that pawn again, and rook takes h2. Uh, once again, you you can just promote this pawn as Mr. Beast, but Mr. Beast playing it safe, not wanting to give up any material. He plays bishop g6, uh, simply saving that bishop. Uh, here you could have even played uh, bishop e5, and this would fork the king and the rook and simply end the game right there. But uh, we have bishop g6, the safe move from Mr. Beast, which is totally okay too. We have c4 from Code Miko and e7 from Mr. Beast. King d7 and rook e2. Um, a, a little unnecessary, you just need to promote the pawn here. Because uh, this does allow now rook h1 check from Code Miko, uh, just allowing her to get a few more checks in. We have king f2 and now c3 from Code Miko. Bishop f5 check, and here you can bring the king to e8, uh, but Code Miko does not do that. She plays king d6 instead. So blocking the promotion square definitely would have been the best try from Code Miko. We have e8 equals queen, and now king d5. Queen e5 check. And uh, king c4. And after queen e4, this is a fork on the king and the rook. So it's going to be all over here for Code Miko very soon. We have king b3, and Mr. Beast does pick up that rook. c2, and uh, Mr. Beast picks up the last of Code Miko's pawns, too. The bishop defends the rook, so black can't even take the rook. We have king b4 from Code Miko, and very nice technique here at the end from Mr. Beast. Not wasting any time. Uh, he plays queen b1 check, and after king a5, he plays rook a2 getting that ladder mate in, and this is checkmate. So uh, Mr. Beast takes the match 2-0. Pretty good chess overall from both players, but um, definitely a lot of room for improvement in this match. Uh, here are the standings for Group D so far. So that Ludwig versus Moist Critical match will determine the seeding in the championship bracket, uh, and Mr. Beast will be seeded in third going into the consolation bracket. Code Miko seeded in fourth going into the consolation bracket bracket. But um, yeah, this was a good match, and uh, we'll see how Mr. Beast and Code Miko play in the Constellation Bracket. Both of them have definitely improved since the start of this tournament, in my opinion. So um, we'll just have to see. Uh, so I, I don't think I have anything else to say about this game or this match. So uh, that Ludwig versus Moist Critical match is the last group stage match. I'll be covering that. Uh, it, it, uh, I'll be uploading those videos later today. But for now, check out my PogChamps 3 playlist and check out another video over there about chess. It's going to be something chess probably. Um, I, I do all things chess here. So make sure you're subscribed and please like the video. It helps me out more than you know. And um, yeah, thank you for watching. Stay awesome and uh, I'll see you next time.